Hello, dear listeners, Editor JT here. After many requests and lots of planning, we're excited to announce we've officially sold out to Big T-Shirt, and Deprogram merch is now available. As we all know, you're not a real communist unless you sell products to your listeners. And friend, have we got some products for you. We collabed with some very talented designers from the community and came up with a bunch of designs we think you'll love. Whether you want a sticker for your laptop, a Chattanooga state-affiliated media hat, or Hakim's patented I'm So Tired coffee cup, we've got a little something for everyone. It's a great way to feed your crippling consumption habit and support the show while you're at it. The merch is available right now at the links below. Now, on to the show. There's like three types of people that listen to this podcast. Number one, are people actually interested in learning more about theory, learning about uh, the socialist cause, et cetera, et cetera. Group number two, that basically only listens to the intro and us mentioning cocks, shit, and urinals, <laughs> and uh, how to properly wash your ass. And group number three, that probably does not catch anything because they just play us in the background while they work around their <laughs> kitchen, uh, wash their dishes, mm. or uh, you know, uh, work off their sweaty backs in, uh, in whatever Whatever, uh, profession that uh, J- that they are. JT, in. could you please say wash their penis, but in the Peterson voice? <laughs> no, I will not do that. <laughs> please, now you have no, to do it. Please, you cannot <laughs> use, uh, request this specific. The evaporating emoji. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Please. You've, you've mentioned that evaporating emoji probably the last five episodes in a row and the live stream. <laughs> it's... I mean, I'm a boomer with this shit. I latch onto one thing. Oh, fuck. No, I love how, I love how JT <laughs> was making fun of me from getting triggered by Hakim's boomers, boomer levels, but now it's reaching even you, JT. Well, exactly. I, I, I admit that I too am a boomer because today I was messing around trying to figure out like uploading stuff to TikTok because I'm doing uh, I'm uploading once every two weeks to Second Thought instead of once a week so. can you hear that Cuck. can you hear <laughs> that can you hear, can you hear that oh. beautiful listeners can you hear that this motherfucker has given me mm-hmm. so much shit about consuming <laughs> TikTok content, about talking about TikTok content, and now he will not only become a consumer of TikTok content, he will became no. become a TikTok creator. Arguably, <laughs> even from my perspective, the bottom of the bottom, even though we had some <laughs> lovely guests who are TikTok creators, but you get my fucking point. Uh, it's a joke. Uh, so basically, um, my two fellow co-hosts are, are, are hypocrites. Hakim, I still yeah. need to find what you're a hypocrite for. But you probably don't even wash your hey, ass hey, properly with water. Every logical time. consistency, but, boys. Uh, that's what the that's what the nur of Islam gives you. Uh, all right. Shut up, la la la. All right. <laughs> boys, I got a few stories for you. As always, oh, <laughs> as always, I'll start. I'll start with the with the most um, inspiring, and then I'll kind of gradually go through. Uh, I've gotten some great discounts on me- on melons recently. Nice. Uh, your boy is a melon fiend, if you didn't know. Um, <laughs> uh, you know what? I go between He's getting uh, melon discounts. Oh, fucking. <laughs> He's got a little coupon book. <laughs> Let me. This, fucking... Are you like? Are you seventy eight? Like I swear to God, I swear to God. Am I ageist? <laughs> I guess I'm ageist. I'm, oh thanks to God. you, Hakeem. I'm learning Dude. more things about myself. I have this <laughs> deep hatred of all people, apparently. Sorry, please continue. Yeah. But you love me. I, I oh. do. I do. Oh, but yeah. that's what's so confusing. I'm like, you know, I, uh, I don't know, a KKK guy's daughter that's in love with a black guy. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, I mean, there you go. I'm glad that you that you liken me enjoying my melon discounts <laughs> to, the to interracial hatred. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the KKK <laughs> constantly keeps talking about watermelons, so you know there's a Jesus. Combo there. I mean, hey, you know what? There's some overlap, I, I guess. But let me let me tell you about these. Uh, my, my, I, I, I go between liking regular watermelon and the other shit, which I don't know what it's called in English. Cantaloupe, fucking I love m- cantaloupe. honeydew, mustard dew. I don't fucking know what they're called. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but can't love this slap actually no for sure that's that was number one number two i don't know how if there's any polite way of saying this uh but some guy came through uh, into the emergency room uh recently and uh he had basically there was an altercation of some sort he ended up being stabbed in the calf Ooh. of all places um i don't know how one stabs another person in the calf it, w- were they was he running and then he tripped and then he stabbed him <laughs> or did the guy was the guy just very short i don't or the other guy very tall i don't know exactly how it happens but this the guy who hit him got him twice in the calf uh and then he sh- came to us and we have to you know make sure that it close up make sure there's no arterial bleed there was an arterial bleed so we had to stop that but uh otherwise um uh, there's something called a log roll. I'm sure anybody who's in healthcare knows what it is, but it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, part of you know your procedure, you need to flip the person on their side just to make sure that everything in the back 
uh, part of the body is okay. Uh, and the second we move this guy, I feel very bad for him. I guess he just really need the bathroom because the second we <laughs> rolled him over, he just started shitting. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I felt so bad. But do you know who I felt even worse for? The poor nurse, because this man, he like these were he was a large man, so these were good solid turds. Uh, <laughs> not not in, uh, thankfully it wasn't like too liquid, right? But this was the uh, man who was stabbed. He, yeah, the man who was stabbed, so, a completely so unrelated. One day, also one day he shit. got stabbed by a, by a short person, and uh, he, he <laughs> shot all over a nurse. That's that's a that's exactly. a great day. Yeah, but no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me tell you the best part about it. This poor nurse, she had to grab it, <laughs> the excrement oh, to, to throw out, oh, to throw Jesus. away, and and right as she was going to basically wipe for him, so that we can make sure that the bed, the the the. A thing where we were putting him on won't be too dirty because he was going to be moved to the operation uh, operating theater afterwards. Um, and we don't need that around. Uh, just as she starts, <laughs> he starts shitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was well, his starts, shit. Oh she realizes he, she yeah. needs to carry more of his shit. Well, afterwards. yeah, exactly. And I felt very bad bad for the lady, and I felt bad for her for two seconds until the smell permeated the entire <laughs> operating hall. And I was like, okay, you know what? Fuck this. So I went to get them. The disinfectant, the hand hand disinfectant, and I just uh, imp- again I, I don't know if this is the right word to use, but I impregnated some you know the cotton fucking yeah, hand things sure. with with it. Um, I mean that is the proper scientific term. Fuck you, okay? <laughs> I didn't just, say a word. I didn't say a thing. <laughs> JT here's like, well, I'm the only one who's actually impregnated somebody here, so I feel <laughs> I'm entitled. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so I, I filled this fucking thing with the with the with the alcohol uh, um, swabbing stuff, and I just held it up to my nose the entire. So that was the second story that I had for you. The guy's fine, by the way. He went home today. Nice. He's, he's he's been vibing. I have um, several questions. Yeah. Uh, oh, please go ahead. The first. Uh, why did this man simply not go to the bathroom? Because uh, he, was <laughs> he did come as an emergency. He did lose like <laughs> like a pint of blood. Okay. I don't know how much All a right. pint is. Hold on. Okay. Pint. Uh, metric. There we go. Uh, fuck you. One U.S. liquid pint is zero point zero zero four cubic meter. F- what the fuck does <laughs> that mean? That? That's oh, not it's, helpful. It's half a liter. Okay. okay. Liquid pint is half a liter. Yeah. He, okay. So I'm not. I'm not wrong. He did lose around a, a pint of blood. A good uh, bit yes. of blood. Okay. Um, Got it. Yeah. A decent. You amount couldn't of blood, like yeah. slapped a band aid on it. He mm. couldn't at least warned you or something. <laughs> He's just <laughs> <laughs> slapped a band aid on his ass. Like where is he? No, on, or, his, or on, on his, his stab fucking stab wounds. Cat. On his. On his. On his <laughs> where he was stabbed by the child or or the chicken uh, or something. Yes. <laughs> I, look, my, I didn't ask the man these questions, and frankly, I felt so bad for him. All right, he already had a bad day. This guy got stabbed and shit in public. <laughs> in full maybe, view maybe, of maybe he got stabbed because he shat in public previously, and then they possibly, and then no, they yeah. took him to Who the knows. fucking hospital, and he continued doing that. Mm. <laughs> well, pour one out for 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 shit man. We got <laughs> the homie, <laughs> exactly for Our for the homie for a real one. Speaking of homies, <laughs> today is the real OG homie day. It's International Women's uh, Day, so let's nice. uh, hey, say hey. something nice about the the females, the females, the wom- the womanoids. The, I mean, they give birth to all of us. The, so exactly, thirty three percent of our listeners. Yeah. Is it really? Oh well, that's very nice to hear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, when I start, when, at least I can speak for my channel. When I look at it, it's always like 10, 15% female mm-hmm. viewership, which is all right. That's pretty cool. Uh, but at some times, I remember very early on, it was like 98% male. Yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. But also, why? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, get the, I get the feeling that my shit must be boring if that's the case, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, You want everybody to thank uh, all the f- women in your lives? Yeah. Um, Call your, mothers, your mom. Give her a hug. Uh, your, yeah, exactly. Your spouses or partners. All right. Your kids, <laughs> if you have them. Yeah. <laughs> and try to um, treat them with respect so yeah. for the other 364 days as well, and not only today. Yeah, exactly right. Do some housework. <laughs> no. Ah, oh, fuck that. Ah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. dude, do you know what? This is, this is such fucking nonsense. Everybody... Um, who who speaks with me? They drop the usual nonsense like, "Oh, you like you know, uh, when you go home, your mom takes care." Bullshit. Do you know when I go home? Mm. Do you know my mom has for since I was maybe thirteen years old, my mom hasn't cooked me a <laughs> cooked me a fucking <laughs> meal. I'll, she'll tell me to go over to her to visit them, and I'll show up, and she's like, "You want to make some food?" So I'll be fucking cooking for them. <laughs> Bullshit. Oh, holy okay, shit. dude, I've been doing chores at home since I was like what, maybe eight or nine years old. Mm. All the chores at home. Mm. I did laundry. I cleaned the fuck. I did everything. My mom had me as a slave basically <laughs> alhamdulillah i don't mind you know she, she, she did 
she she works plenty. So. International Women's Day, except for Hakeem's mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put her on all the posters, like inspiration. Oh, mm. uh, fuck them mm, kids. Exactly. They're gonna cook for me, man. Mm. <laughs> I have one more story for you boys, okay? So, uh, like around a month ago, uh, we had a patient. Uh, by the way, I'm on rotations, basically, so that's why uh, I, I'm, I'm in many different departments at this current period. Um, but anyway, so this one guy uh, had come, and he, uh, I don't know, maybe it was attempted suicide, maybe he fell out of a window. I don't know exactly what happened, but he fell out of the sixth floor, basically. Wow. Uh, and he he messes shit up, uh, unsurprisingly, as one does when, when they fall out of the uh, sixth floor. So he, he didn't die, uh, but he was all sort of messed up. He has uh, fractures all over his back and his legs. Oof. Um uh, an absolute mess. He was basically out of it for like three weeks. Uh, he wouldn't wake up. Then afterwards, he woke up a bit, but he couldn't speak. He had issues with his swallowing, uh, am- am- amongst many other things. We operated on his legs and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the general idea or, or um, belief is that he's not going to be able to walk again. That, that was the thing. And I had to go and break it to him and his family. So it was really depressing. Um, this This guy, not 20 minutes after, but by the way, we keep telling like, try to move, try to, you know, let's see what you can, mm-hmm. let's see what, what function you still have left. Uh, but he's weak and tired and of course, all that kind of stuff. Um, but 20 minutes after I go to this guy and uh, I tell him, uh, hey, you know, you're probably not going to walk anymore. Uh, neuro rehab, they don't want to even look at you because they think you're a lo- like a lost cause, wow. basically. All that 20 minutes after this, I say uh, I say this to, to this guy, he starts wiggling his fucking toes and <laughs> his legs and shit. I'm like, oh, let's fucking go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was, it was awesome. very, very uplifting. It was. It was the first time in my life. Actually, it felt like a movie in a weird way. Yeah. Because it really did feel like the low point. And then all of a sudden, this dude made his comeback. And everybody in the ward, like, started celebrating. It was it was very nice. Aww. Like, the nurses and doctors, everybody was like, let's go. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and like, uh, day after day, he's improving. Alhamdulillah. That's awesome. Um, and uh, it, it's... To the point that even neuro rehab was like, this guy's a lost cause. Wow. Uh, we called them as like, you, you motherfuckers, you need to come down. Da- you need to come take a look. Uh, you, you, you need to come down here. And then they came and they took a look and I was like, okay, we, we, we'll take him. We'll take him. I was like, all right, <laughs> our work is done. Yes. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another installment of arguably the most original online politics show out there. (laughs) Send nudes. I mean, um, send news. I have done this joke 11 times now and regular (laughs) listeners have probably heard it for 11 times now. And it's still honestly not boring for me. If it's boring Mm. for you, then fuck you. Uh, but who do I not fuck uh, unless they want me to, of course. Uh, our beautiful, lovely patrons, without whom this show would not... I was like, not, where is he going with this? Yeah. <laughs> without whom this show would not be able to run. Thank you for supporting us and for those of you considering potentially supporting the show and keeping it as independent as possible, please check out some of the links below. So with that being said, let's take it for a spin with the first story of the previous month. JT, go on. (laughs) Please keep that. Bless you. Please keep all that. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, our first tidbit of news here is one that I've actually been working on myself for the last month or so. Um, If you are listening to this on the day it goes up for patrons, there is a brand new video, or there should be a brand new video on my channel uh, about the East Palestine, Ohio train derailment. It's my longest mm. video ever. It's about 40 minutes long, something like that. Please go watch it. <laughs> Please mm-hmm. uh, put a lot of work into it. But TLDR, uh, February 3rd, I believe, a train carrying vinyl chloride and other dangerous chemicals derailed in a small town in Ohio. Um, and this uh, caused some some concern uh, in the local population, obviously, because there were these chemicals leaching out into the ground. Um, and so what happened was there was a, a risk of these train cars exploding because there was a fire uh, and it was heating up the inside of these pressurized cars. So what first responders ended up doing was blowing some small holes in some of these cars, draining the chemicals into a ditch, basically on the side of the tracks, and then lighting that on fire in what's called a controlled burn. And so that's where you saw all of these photos of this massive black plume of, of smoke 
um, coming up from the, these burning train cars. And that released uh, all of these toxic chemicals not only into the ground, into the water, but also into the air. And this plume traveled uh, many, many miles towards uh, towards Pittsburgh, I believe, was the direction it would, the, the wind was carrying it. But it also ended up uh, over parts of Canada. Um, and these 5,000 people were kind of left in the dark here because Norfolk Southern, the, the people who uh, owned the train and the chemicals aboard it, weren't really forthcoming with information about how exactly this had happened, what the extent of the, of the danger was. Um, so I was there in East Palestine for a few days, and we went to a town hall where they had uh, Aaron Brockovich, who's a, um, like a professional agitator, a professional uh, environmental activist, and she, she gave a, a rousing speech to, to the locals and then handed it off to a lawyer guy who pitched his, his law services and um, a water expert um, who has basically said that never in his, in his entire career has he seen a community where there is zero protection from chemicals leaching into the water table and the water that is used to and distributed to community members. So these people are, are frankly kind of screwed. Um, they are facing a many decades long uphill battle, a, both a legal battle and a health battle, legal with Norfolk Southern, because this has happened many times before on their watch and they, they have the money. Mm. It's, it's built into their, their it's operating. It's happened again since, yeah. by the way. Oh yeah, just the, uh, the other day and multiple times since. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. th- this is the type of thing where it's, unless you break the system, that allows this kind of thing to happen, unless you nationalize the rail industry, for example, that would be a step in the right direction, then these things are going to continue to happen because it's always going to be cheaper to ignore the problems and pay whatever little slap on the wrist fine you get than to invest you know, a couple billion dollars in rail safety, uh, personnel, things like that. So that's what's, uh, what's been going on in East Palestine for the past month. Um, it's, it's something to worry. It's worth keeping your eyes on because it is fairly indicative of the state of the rest of the rail industry in the United States. At least we, we see like a thousand derailments a year. Um, this is just one of the more, more news making ones. Um, but this is a problem that we, we faced for a long time and will continue to face for as long as capitalism is allowed to continue here. Hold on, but the market will find a solution. <laughs> uh, is not is not the case, JT? Uh, please, please tell me that the market will find a solution. <laughs> I'm I'm I regret to announce that in this particular case, the market will not find a solution. Rip. Oh no! This is this is some commie, filthy commie talk <laughs> yeah. if I've ever heard it. Yeah. No, this is a uh, this is a little I, sus. guys. I, I guys, I'm not sure, but I think second thought might be a tanky. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry, piece of shit. <laughs> so I'm so sorry. Red flash, red flash, tanky. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, red flash. Corporal authoritarian. You think they, you think you think they should have clean drinking water? What's wrong with you? Yeah. Of course, the market. We need to have a market solution which will incorporate the shareholders. Um, Five thousand of you may sorry. die, but that is a price yeah. I am willing to pay. Sorry, you got me. Please hit us, hit us with another, with some hard hitting journalism. I love. Um, how this is going to be a train episode because tens of thousands of people took to the streets of uh, Greece on uh, this Wednesday, uh, previous Wednesday, and the workers went on strike in the biggest show of public anger yet over the country's deadliest train disaster of all time, actually, that killed over 57 people last wow. week. The crash was on February 28th, and it has third public outrage over the crumbling state of uh, the rail network. So it's not only you, USA. Striking workers say years of neglect, underinvestment, and understaffing. A legacy of Greece's decade-long debt crisis are to blame. In the largest street protest the government has uh, faced since being elected in 2019, police estimated more than 60,000 people, which realistically is most likely more than 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. Among them, transport workers, students, and teachers took part in demonstrations in cities all across Greece. Uh, Thousands also Mm -hmm. took to the streets in Greece's second biggest city, Thessaloniki, uh, where a group of protesters 
posters, curled stones, and fucked up uh, some of the uh, police cordons and so on. Many of the around 350 people aboard uh, that intercity passenger train that collided head-on with a freight train, head-on while traveling on the same track were university students heading north uh, to Thessaloniki from Athens. Uh, Message me when you get there was a placard held up by many of the students in Athens, echoing what has become one of the slogans of the protests over the past week, because uh, sadly enough, many of them received uh, this message over and over again from their mothers and fathers Mm. who would later never see their children again. Uh, Rail workers had already been uh, staging rolling strikes since Thursday, bringing the network basically to a halt. There's almost no trains moving through Greece at this point. They say their demands for improvement in safety protocols have gone unheard for years and years and have promised to impose safety to ensure that the crash will not, uh, the promises that they will impose safety uh, so that the crashes like this do not uh, repeat is too late. Uh, To quote, we drivers have filled complaints about these things. We have gone on strike about it. We have made warnings. We have protested. uh, And yet nothing, said the uh, union leader Costas uh, back on Monday. Uh, They told us we were lying. We were slanderous. We had other interests. In the end, it showed that the worker was right. It is just sad. It had to take so many lives for us to prove our point. Greece's largest public sector union joined Wednesday's 24-hour strike. City transport workers walked off the job in solidarity. The metro didn't work. The tram didn't work. The bus didn't work in the capital. Ships also remained docked at ports as seamen participated in the action. Uh, To quote, it's not the time to fall silent. The government, whose term expires in July, has obviously blamed it on a hundred reasons, except the main one that JT previously mentioned and the other train tragedy literally across the globe, which is that the market does not do anything good for infrastructure because infrastructure being fixed literally costs less than them dealing with the lawsuits of something breaking, something falling, something exploding, something leaking, or kids not getting to their fucking classes, but not from the form of being laid to them, but literally being buried into the ground. So when people say, you know, when it's a a bit too um, uh, deep for them and they don't want to philosophize about, you know, how the market is killing, you know, the 20 million starving motherfuckers over there or the uh, 50 million, you know, dying in this or that conflict, uh, then show them examples like this that are very physical and very in your face where uh, just... uh, the complete abandonment of anything human when it comes to how we manage our, our societies leads to direct death of fucking kids. If that's not proof enough mm. to you that the market kills, then our, a capitalist market kills, then I don't know uh, what can fucking wake you up. You're a lost cause. Very, very beautifully said. Um, let's raise some spirits a little bit, I guess, and uh, to, to juxtapose that. But tell me it's a train. Some, some tell me it's a, a good train <laughs> story. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, it, it is train related. Oh, wow, uh, really? Know, tangentially. Jesus Christ. Yeah, nice. a little bit, okay. a little bit. But okay, well. so um, recently, uh, the Macron or Macaroni uh, government of, <laughs> of uh, France has tried to, or has been very, uh, they're hard in pushing their uh, new pension reform, which includes, amongst other many students, stupid changes, um, raising the retirement age mm. to 64. Because, yeah. uh, of course, that's what you want when you want to retire, right? Uh, that every single year, <laughs> retirement just crawls away a bit more forward. Um, Imagine so you're like that end, age, be... right, when it's supposed to happen, and then oh it jumps God. by three years. <laughs> and then you get to it in three yeah. years, and then it jumps again. Fucking hell. Yeah, but that's basically what's been happening yeah. um, all across Europe and the world in general, aside from places where people actually stand up and protest, uh, which is what's exactly happening in France right now there have been uh for several days now uh and also this is in connection to um protests that have happened earlier this month and last month as well 
uh, almost 1.3 million people wow. in France uh, have came out to basically bring France entirely to a halt. Uh, nationwide strike, it involves, so, think of an industry, it involves it, uh, but one of uh, the biggest ones that took part as well was the um, major rail uh, networks and train uh, services, which basically uh, either in some case, in some places they stopped running entirely, in other cases they stopped taking fares, but they still ran depending uh, on, on which area we're discussing. Schools were shut down, Fuel deliveries were even stopped, uh, which is beyond based, yeah. by the way. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, and uh, basically, as a result, the French government has decided to, to do an entire U-turn, which, by the way, I love supposedly. And this is the thing that people need to realize, the ideology at the background of this. Whenever anybody tells you that there's such a thing as democracy in North America or Western Europe, this is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. The vast majority uh, of people in, in voting, polling, and whatnot, have mentioned that they don't want the retirement age to go up. Number one. Number two, they've made their voices heard by taking to the streets. And the quote-unquote democratic system within France has set basically police and, and, and uh, like riot police and militarized police on these people uh, trying to contain them. Number one. Number two, had tried to fight tooth and nail before they finally acquiesced to saying, all right, we'll do a U-turn on this policy. We'll try again in the future, which is the death knell of, of yeah. social democracy, uh, of course. But this is what you need to remember when anybody tells you that, oh yeah, we need to be a social democracy like like France or, or Norway or whatever, this is exactly what happens. The vast majority of interests of the working class are not represented by bourgeois democracies like France, like Canada, like uh, any other country that you can think of. And this is a perfect example of this. My favorite, uh, of course, uh, representation of these protests, usually when they happen in France, is they never just show the like large groups of people with their flags and, and their placards and whatnot. Yeah. They always show the one little trash can that's burning yeah. and the next to the riot yeah. police, just to, to reinforce like, oh, you know, the the oh how 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 much of a mess it is. Yeah. These fucking the mob is taking control. We, oh. we beautiful Paris being destroyed by these mm. peasants. Oh, I wish, I wish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the, my, do you know my favorite part? My favorite part about this is in a lot of the the articles that discuss this, uh, they mentioned the quote-unquote hard left CGT union. That's the General Confederation of Labor of France, which is a fairly large union. It was founded in the, the end of the 1800s, mm. um, and it's a huge union uh, as well, um, with a, nearly a million members. Uh, and uh, they... They call it the quote unquote hard left because I don't know, like in 1946, they were connected to the French Communist Party. Right now, they're basically like lukewarm social democrats, from what I've seen at least. And they have like a lot of good trade unions and stuff, but for the most part, they're still social democratic in their outlook. But I love how that's hard left, of course, the overtime window <laughs> keeps shifting. Yeah. But my favorite part about it is um, the head of this uh, union is a guy named Philippe Martinez. And this boy, my God, he has a mustache to rival uh, <laughs> Uncle Joe's, yes. the good Uncle. Joe. <laughs> I'm going to send a picture to the boys. Just take a look at this guy's mustache. Look at that. Philippe Man. Martinez, pause and take a look at this dude's mustache. This guy, imagine him giving you a big old smooch. Uh, <laughs> That's proper. That's like an actual <laughs> walrus mustache. I love mm -hmm. that. Oh, man. That is so difficult to pull off and not only to pull off, but to actually grow. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to say, this guy, I don't know his politics, so I don't know if we're going to support him. The little that I've read about him, he seems pretty based. He supports a fairly high minimum wage in France, a 32-hour work week, um, some like job creation policies that seems semi-reasonable, uh, and of course the 60-year uh, excuse me, um, uh, retirement age, amongst uh, other things. Uh, so that's that, that's this guy. I don't know if he's based yeah. otherwise. Regardless, or not, into it too uncritical deep. support mm -hmm. for his mustache. That's all that really matters. Exactly right. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah. And by the way, all these all these fucking articles, all they talk about is like, oh, but the reform plan isn't going to be any good. Oh, we're going to the, the the pension funds will run out of money. I'm like, OK, here's a question. I, I, I don't know if they if they even thought about it, but hypothetically, hypothetically, how about you kind of just a little bit dip into the corporate profits that have been fucking uh, record high for the past like six or mm. eight years, uh, year after year, maybe that will that could possibly fix the the pension, you know, nah, or yeah. better yet, nationalize everything. Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, not, I'll get off my soapbox about that. Where are, I think it's fairly clear what, what, where we lean <laughs> yeah. on the on the nationalization question, wow. boys. Uh, and of course, it's a moderate um, what's it called nationalization of uh, through through corporate through, through corporations, of course, uh, in which we maintain the 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 market as the sole determiner uh, of. Uh, 
Now you just call you just call a guy in the Central Committee market. You change his name legally, and, <laughs> and it's basically exactly. under under European Union definition of democracy. It's a market economy, so it's still democratic. Exactly right. Yeah, the AI that will uh, basically plan the will, will uh, manage the planning mechanisms uh, will be called market. Yeah, and um, and it's like grows to consciousness, uh, and it is like, but gentlemen, why did you name me? Why did you create me one of the most efficient? central planning systems and yet you named me as one of the least efficient planning systems the market it's like confused by by the offensive Aww. name it has been given poor little robot okay next uh let's talk about ukraine biden administration oh, sends another two billion dollars in military funding to ukraine bringing the running total to over 30 billion dollars all to advance oh, U.S. geopolitical goals in the region at the cost of countless lives. And what I wanted to do... No, but Ukrainian freedom. Hey, please, uh, <laughs> people who couldn't point out Ukraine on a map three weeks ago, yeah. now are all about uh, Slava Ukraini, guys. Please, we need to Slava Ukraini. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> all you have to do is say freedom. That's literally exactly. all you have to do to get Americans on your side is say freedom. It's so frustrating. Do you like orcs? Is that what you're <laughs> oh trying to God. tell me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Right. Let yeah. me let me read a bit of this um, this press release uh, from February 24th, 2023, from the U.S. Department of Defense. One year ago today, Russia launched an unprovoked and indefensible full-scale invasion of its peaceful and democratic neighbor, Ukraine. One year on, the commitment of the United States, together with some 50 countries who have rallied to rush urgently needed assistance to Ukraine, has only strengthened. Today, the Department of Defense is announcing a new security assistance package to reaffirm the steadfast support of the United States for Ukraine's brave defenders and strengthen Ukraine's air defenses. This package, which totals $2 billion, is being provided under the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative as part of our commitment to Ukraine's long-term security. Specifically, the United States is committing additional unmanned aerial systems and counter UAS and electronic warfare detection equipment, as well as critical ammunition stocks for artillery and precision fire capabilities that will bolster Ukraine's ability to repel Russian aggression. Then it lists a bunch of very scary-sounding uh, military equipment, including the Switchblade 600 UAS. Uh, oh, wow, my favorite, my favorite COD <laughs> <yeah>. map. <laughs> um, the United States will continue to work with its allies and partners to provide Ukraine with capabilities to meet its immediate battlefield needs and longer-term security assistance requirements for as long as mm. it takes. But willing to, to, to fight until the last Ukrainian. Exactly. Yeah, this yeah, whole yeah, thing yeah. is just full of those, those buzzwords. Like, I mean, think what you want about Russia. Like, obviously, it's, it's an oligarchy. It's, it's, you know, very, very bad guys. Um, but, like, Russia launched an unprovoked full-scale invasion of its mm. peaceful and democratic neighbor, Ukraine. Like, there's... Oh, yes, of course. Well, they become democratic. Uh, Words don't have meanings anymore, no. guys. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ah, a literal <laughs> a color revolution coup <laughs> in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, it's just, it's exhausting because you get the, you know, the same propaganda all the time. And finally, people, at least a little bit, are starting to see through it. But $2 billion for to blow up, you know, civilians in that region of the world versus... Zero dollars for what we've just talked about, East Palestine. Like you had mm. Trump go mm. and he brought water bottles. I was like, people are like, oh, that's nice. And then it turns out the water bottles are twelve years expired. Like, how do you find twelve year old water uh, just <laughs> sitting in a warehouse somewhere? Someone was saying it was Trump branded water bottles that he just didn't know what to do with. It's like Lamal. Uh, oh my God. He could have just rebottled it. He could have done it himself. I don't think it would have taken that long. I mean, I know. I know. It's, uh, I, you know, well, I don't want anyone to, to accuse us of, of supporting Russia or whatever, or, you know, picking sides in this. Uh, it's, yeah, fucking, uh, it's, yeah. We don't need to be sending billions and billions of dollars to fund just brutal meat grinder warfare that benefits mm. none of the working class in Ukraine or Russia or any of that region. All it's trying to do is destabilize uh, the region to advance uh, U.S. and NATO geopolitical interests. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 a lose-lose situation for, for the combatants. Your mistake there is thinking that they want to benefit the working classes. Well, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, but... <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, it's it's a mess. The entire uh, war is you, anybody who thinks it's unprovoked is an idiot. Yeah. Anybody who tries to justify it on the other end as well is kind of you know like a little sus. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of nuance to discuss. Yeah, there's a lot of nuance to discuss uh, to this discussion. Uh, the most important point of this entirely is 
and I, I, I know that I'm a broken record on this, but the greatest geopolitical disaster of the past century, if not the past like 500 years probably, has been the illegal dissolution of the Soviet Union, yeah. which has resulted in brother next to brother picking up guns and de- destroying basically what was left over Soviet infrastructure to begin with, because no new construction had been going on in Ukraine either. Um, and now you're damning this country to be basically another frozen conflict a mess with no utilities, no education, no healthcare, no nothing. So at best, it's going to be another source of cheap uh, labor and cheap uh, resources, mineral resources and other natural resources for Western Europe and North America, as well as basically stoking the geopolitical fires and maintaining a little vassal state yeah. in the area. Exactly. And an easy way to launder a shit ton of money and uh, create, yeah. quote unquote, a shit ton of jobs whenever Ukraine needs to be rebuilt. I mean, they're going to put so much fucking cash in this shit is going to be absolutely unbelievable but like the whole the whole conflict uh, relatively similar to to the yugoslav conflicts but you know this one happened uh, after the development of capitalism for you know pretty much three decades in uh, in both of these uh, states it's like a new type of genre it's not just uh, post-apocalyptic it's post post-apocalyptic because mm-hmm. you know the life in a, in a post-socialist world i mean i know i live in it is it feels very much much like you are, you know, when you walk down the street and you see certain monuments, you see certain buildings, you see some leftover placards that nobody, you know, remember to remove yet and replace mm-hmm. with, you know, some stupid capitalist or pro-fascist uh, historical slogan. You, you, you feel like you, you're just existing in a place that uh, Frozen um, time. is wrapped in, 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 uh, different memories of a bygone era when we attempted to do something more than just build bigger and bigger malls and buy flashier and flashier jeans. But now when you have a direct war where these post-apocalyptic states to an extent are mowing each other down, people with extremely similar culture, people who uh, quite literally coexisted in one of the greatest and biggest internationalist projects of uh, of all time mowing down every single brick that those evil soviets back in the day created leads to again this post post apocalyptic world where you no longer even will be able to walk through the streets and see something reminiscent of a of a uh, more inspired let's use that word a more more inspired time because it will all be leveled and then replaced with whatever fucking side wins their shiny little glass buildings where they will uh, you know input their little private businesses in order to uh, stimulate uh, the groups that we all know get stimulated mostly from this speaking of which i can di- mm. i can directly loop this into kind of the next uh, topic of conversation is the biggest battle currently going on there is obviously in Bakhmut. Uh, the Ukrainians are currently being surrounded by uh, the private military company uh, uh, Wagner, Wagner, but you can pronounce it uh, Wag, Wagner, whatever way, uh, <laughs> Wagner. Wagner, 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 <laughs> uh, whatever way you want to pronounce it. But uh, you can read more than enough about uh, the current situation on the front uh, from uh, many sources online. TLDR is that it's uh, it's a literal meat. Turner, you know, troops just being thrown in by both sides, and uh, we currently do not know exactly how many people are dying on the daily, but many estimates that I've read and listened to directly from uh, be it majors uh, and uh, officers from both sides, the, the, the running joke there, the dark joke, like they always exist on the front is, you know, the average lifespan on the front is around four to five hours. Uh, and I've heard the both both sides kind of uh, state a similar thing but what's more interested mm. interesting is that uh, this private military corporation which obviously util- uh, most people know utilizes uh, violent criminals who are given um, amnesty post the participation as well as professional soldiers who want to make some extra money and don't want to uh, be hurled with uh, with the standard standard troops something that absolutely exists on the Ukrainian side as well only there they're termed as freedom fighters or 
volunteer groups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, volunteer groups with six, seven k euro salaries. Okay, that sounds like I want to be a fucking volunteer then for that money. But uh, but uh, it brings us to to an interesting conversation about the future of war and uh, of the participation of quite literal corporations, which Wagner is literally that. Um, you know, creating private armies which can be utilized for the particular purpose of uh, uh, of war and how like the specific conflict when it comes to the, the capability of uh, r- Russian forces and then Russian private military forces uh, you can see a uh, uh, the, the market that I guess is the main topic of this episode playing a very vital part because unironically the ones that are more cutthroat which is obviously the private corporation uh, when it comes to both their soldiers and enemy soldiers the one who has more funding because again it is private and the one who has uh, basically uh, as ironic as it is sometimes more know-how about how to get shit done uh, even in the field of of, uh, of military battles is shifting towards the uh, the private so-called enterprise. Obviously, we've seen military contractors in many a war ever since like the 80s, but we've never seen, uh, you know, something that uh, a, a, a private military force that is, you know, quite literally the main uh, driving nail at at the head of the of the of the military uh, strategy of a particular republic in this case uh, in the Russian Federation so it's going to be interesting to see uh, obviously not very interesting it's going to be very fucked up to see uh, many other countries applying the same uh, policy when it comes to uh, creating and utilizing state sanctioned uh, military contractors because if uh, Wag- Wagner is uh, a kind of a case study it shows that it can be very 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 successful i will note one one thing as well is that yes they play a very large part but they're it's not the first war that we see them play almost a decisive um uh role uh the iraq invasion yeah at first was mostly american troops yep. but then afterwards was blackwater which was a private military company like basically contract works uh, con- uh, contract uh, workers uh, essentially, if you want to even call it that, contract war criminals, basically. Um, but yeah, uh, of which, by the way, nobody was convicted for their war crimes. They were all pardoned later. But yeah, yeah. The difference being, but these are like first line soldiers that are, you know, entering the territory mm. first, while private military corporations in in the past have mostly been used quite as you said as murderers locally to quote unquote pacify the population and to do the Mm. you know the post invasion dirty work but now they're the invaders as well so can you imagine when they're also the invaders and the dirty work Mm. afterwards and then the occupation force and then at one point they tell the quote unquote country they work for when they tell them you know you got to pull out they tell them fuck no we're we're staying and Mm. then you know the, the snowball effect yeah it'll be interesting to see how this kind of uh, develops because it is it makes perfect sense uh, under capitalism that eventually the expense of maintaining a national military will become fat that needs to be trimmed it'll be cheaper to to maintain uh, or to contract it out um, but like Hakeem was saying Blackwater uh, which is now uh, Academy it's gone by a few names has played a, a major and important role in in previous wars and occupations in that they the u.s has plausible deniability um when it comes to war crimes and you've, we've seen that these these blackwater um operatives have committed atrocious war crimes against civilians and they get pardoned every time so it's it's a very easy way to to pursue certain goals in a region without saying, you know, we explicitly condone this as the United States of America. It's more like, well, these are private companies. They, you know, they'll do their own thing. And, and you know, we, we hire them to help with us, but we don't really have a complete control over them. Yeah. So it's very, it's, it's an easy way to kind of shift the blame. Um, but like Yugovnik was saying, it's, you know, what happens when they become the occupying force, the invading force, the main group that that facilitates the either a toppling of a government or or tries to install themselves as as the new power in the region there's a lot of that coming down the pipe i think and that's uh that's going to be bad news it's obviously speculation but even now in this obvious like 
PMC Wagner is nowhere even close as powerful or wealthy as the uh, you know Ministry of uh, Defense of the Russian Federation. But even now, because of their direct successes, kind of overshadowing those of uh, of regular Russian troops to an extent. We are having like face-to-face conflicts between uh, generals of the Russian Federation and the uh, and the PMC, where you know they're trying to limit how much ammo these guys get. They're trying to limit how much like equipment they get, so that you know they slow down in their advancement. So it's literally a very weird and I'm I'm sorry, but kind of funny like infighting between you know the private mm-hmm. hand and the so-called government people's mm-hmm. hand, even though we all know who it belongs mm-hmm. to in a in a capitalist state. We'll see the developments not only in this conflict but probably the future dystopia that uh, yeah. we will be walking uh, but uh, i don't see as you put perfectly like it's the way the fucking market works i if they prove their success in one war second war third war fifth war quote unquote success you know what i mean yeah, uh, yeah. they're just their growth is quite literally has immeasurable potential financial uh, speaking of uh, military contractors and the Iraq war and all that, this leads into beautifully. Um, just a, basically a couple of days ago, there was an unannounced trip by the U.S. Secretary of Defense, uh, Lloyd Austin. He made uh, this trip to Iraq. Uh, of course, <laughs> unwelcome and unannounced. Um, <laughs> only welcomed by the traitors. Did you go take a photo with him? Did you go like, uh, clap? <laughs> like wave a little yeah, flaggy? Uh, if, if, I could get that, if I could get close enough... <laughs> <laughs> All right. But anyways, um, he showed up unannounced to basically declare to the world uh, that uh, the United States will basically maintain a military presence in Iraq or to reaffirm that the United States will maintain a military presence in Iraq. Um, the official, uh, I think, um, numbers right now is something like 3,000 soldiers uh, in Iraq. The, the actual level is probably a lot higher than this. Uh, but currently, they believe it's around 3,000. There's around 1,000 also in Syria. Um, and my favorite bit about it is in the official statement, um, he said that uh, the U.S. forces are ready to remain in Iraq at the invitation of the government of Iraq, <laughs> which uh, I find very funny because when you have a puppet state, basically... <laughs> <laughs> and you can basically dictate what they can say, you know. Um, that's that's like the Americans going uh, and be like, well, at the behest of the Somoza dictatorship, uh, <laughs> we can, <laughs> right? Uh, we'll maintain a military presence in, in Central America. It's so fucking yeah. pointless. Um, and of course, the the um, cucks in power uh, in Iraq, uh, every they all came out in droves to be like, oh, we want to strengthen and broaden our partnership and support. Uh, of uh, the fucking American forces, all keenness to strengthen and consolidate relations with the United States, uh, all this uh, absolute garbage. Um, and my favorite part about this is the, the 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 package that they're trying to sell is that this is supposed to be fighting ISIS still, yeah. um, which is a spent force basically in the region completely. And the image that they use uh, for this, for some reason, is like a bad edit of like ISIS fighters but they're on top of a building in like Chicago or something wow <laughs> and they're trying to be like oh like you know US troops be- staying in Iraq will prevent ISIS from taking over the US oh yes this God. group of like 2,000 people <laughs> um, yeah it's, it's fucking if they ridiculous. leave that like picture remember that picture of like a <laughs> like a Soviet soldier shaking hands with uh, with an <laughs> ISIS fighter <laughs> yeah, in exactly. front of a burning yeah. White House that is what is going to <laughs> oh happen <my> mmm <laughs> But yeah, no, there's nothing else aside from my uh, unrepentant anger that I can say about this (laughs) particular bit of news. So you guys, but do you know? Do you know any people like acquaintances and so on? We all have cringe acquaintances Mm. that are like actual members of these parties or like like actual supporters of these parties. Actual, yeah. Oh my god, dude. I my how do they explain um, it to themselves? I have a cousin. I always wonder. I I have a cousin who is uh, what's it called? Like, is a bureaucratic worker for everything american government in, in uh, iraq wow uh, so basically whenever an american soldier or an american fucking diplomat or another uh shows up uh, in iraq uh, this particular cousin is the one that does all their paperwork and makes sure that everything is like taken care of so they can be quote-unquote legally here uh-huh. and all this kind of stuff um and i just remember the story i mean they're my cousin but uh they do support the americans so i'm so so about it but i remember in 2000 and four there was a woman on a street um who was known to be a translator uh, secretly translated for the Americans when they first came in and this woman I think didn't last two weeks before wow. uh, and I don't know if I feel you know actually <laughs> keep bleeping but but yeah <laughs>
<laughs> Moving on, JT, you can go to another one, please. All right. <laughs> Before I get us taken off the fucking yeah. platform. <laughs> All right. Speaking of uh, getting us taken off the platform, um, let's talk about apartheid. Israeli settlers oh conduct pogroms on Palestinians. So at the end of February, a bunch of Israeli settlers, this was not their military, this was a bunch of dudes from like Ohio and stuff, um, who were occupying the area, went into a Palestinian town and carried out what many people have called a pogrom. They I'm burned. sorry, but just please stop. You say like a bunch of guys from Ohio, probably from mm. East Palestine. Oh my God. <laughs> because of the fucking <laughs> leak went to oh. actual Palestina. <laughs> and then, sorry, mm. that, to, they just clicked to, to claim their land. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. Oh, my God. It was anyway. Stupid. I mean, you've seen that. You've seen the video, right, of the guy that some uh, Brooklyn yeah. fucking... If I don't take it, someone asshat. else will. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If I don't steal it, it's somebody insane. else will. I was like, it's like, you're going to have to stand before your Lord and my Lord, and you're going to have to justify what you just said, my guy. Yeah, I mean, you have no... Uh, like, right. surely, Sorry, surely you hear yourself when you say things like this. It's like, these no, man, these, these people, people have lived right. here for generations. This is this is the home that their great-great-grandfather built. And mm. you're coming in from, mm. what, Scranton? <laughs> and and you're like, this is mine yeah. now. Oh, from geez. Long Island. Yeah, from Long Island. Like, uh, uh, there's no Duncan here. I don't know. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, so yeah. the, a bunch of settlers um, got a little rowdy, to say the least, and burned a bunch of buildings, killed some animals, mm. killed... One oh, Palestinian. Boys being boys. Yeah, God, oh, God. Yeah. Um, threw stones at people, broke Palestinian cars. Murdered people. They actually Frank, killed they, one person. They did. Was, they, was they, murdered, yeah. they murdered someone, yeah. and over uh, or almost 100 others were injured. And mm. two days later, no one was still held. None of these settlers were still held mm. um, no. for, for these they crimes that they committed. Yeah. Now, the IDF... Uh, has has you know they spoke they were there they spoke to the settlers uh, very sternly so, oh you can't go around and do this but here's the thing mm. if your government is saying things like we want a Jewish ethno state if they are stating that mm. explicitly and they but and they say things like oh you know we don't want vigilante violence or anything what do you expect to happen when you say that to to your citizens all the time. It's absolutely going to cause vigilante violence. It's the same thing mm. we're seeing in places like the United States where you have like Tucker Carlson and all the rest talking about, oh, the groomers, the, the groomer panic, mm. you know, these gay people they're recruiting. So uh, they deserve to be exterminated. But don't go and exterminate them. We're just saying, you know, hypothetically, if, if you were to go mm -hmm. beat them up, that would probably be good and protecting the children. So this is mm. stochastic terrorism. It's where you cannot explicitly state that there is a connection there but it is very likely to happen mm. there's also explicit clear terrorism on the part of oh absolutely the legal military set absolutely 100 percent. let's already go on no you're you're 100 right like this there's no defending the entire project there it is it is blatantly mm. genocidal and it is it's blatantly mm. yeah. apartheid but like in this instance where we're starting to see the settlers themselves take these uh, actions of, of hate and violence a little bit further and start actually burning buildings and start killing Palestinians. But you know how empowered you must feel yeah. in order you, for you, you to know feel there like will you be no the, uh, retaliation. Consequences. No, yeah, yeah. no consequences mm -hmm. because you are living in a place that wants that to happen. Not only this, yeah, the, when your prime minister comes out and says, yes, go, mm -hmm. go fucking settle and steal and do all this and murder and, and kill and yeah. rape and do all this, and I will make sure personally that nothing happens to you. Yeah. When your own prime minister tells you this. Yeah. Right? And yeah. when you do uh, it, like, just, you know, ignore us when we go out on television and talk to all the fucking mm. normies about, ah, this vigilante stuff, yeah. it's bad, mm. you shouldn't do it. Just ignore that, that's how we're covering our asses. But man, go out there, enjoy yourself. Nothing will, nothing will encapsulate this better than the actual like subheader uh, on an article from the Times of Israel. More like is not real, <laughs> oh um, uh, But yeah, <laughs> got it, <him>, got <laughs> Fucking. Uh, <laughs> you have to make light of, yeah. uh, of it. Otherwise, you either just get sad or angry. Yeah. But um, the actual subheader is uh, of um, basically uh, some military cunt who oversees the the West Bank. Uh, and he says that he, he warns of future clashes that could end up in Isra Israeli fatalities. Oh, my God. That's his, 
That's the concern. Product. That's his, uh, <laughs> exactly. There could possibly, God forbid, uh, an Israeli one, one of the settlers might, might, might stub their toe on the way into, you know. But anyway, um, to wrap this piece up, um, these settlers have not stopped. They have not been uh, calmed by uh, mm. officials of the Israeli regime. Uh, instead, they are saying, we're going to do this again. This is, we need mm. to go and, and destroy this town and wipe it off the face of the earth. We mm. do not intend to stop. Mm. So I think, I, please, please, like, talk to your, to your liberal friends and stuff and show them what's happening here. Because this is, this is kind of a litmus test of, of, are you a decent person or are you a hypocrite? Like, if you, do you, if you want to talk about uh, human rights, let's start there. Uh, and I think something also important to notice is that whenever any online, what's it called, uh, uh, discussion uh, about the Zionist, the illegal Zionist, uh, settler colonial military occupation of Palestine, there will undoubtedly be a flood of these, you can call them trolls, you can call them whatever you like, but the, the Israeli government, the Zionist government specifically pays people and has entire legions of people sitting at computers and all they fucking do all day is to look up any potentially either um, anti-Israeli sentiment or, or point uh, or anti-Zionist more like uh, or any pro-Palestinian yeah. point. And then they just start bullshit. They just start, you know, the fucking gish galloping and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can notice them usually because of bad grammar and horribly outdated memes yeah. uh, because these people are basically paid minimum wage so they don't work very hard uh, and they all have the same talking points. But any single time uh, you mention anything related to Israel, they immediately pop up. And if you doubt me, uh, join any thread anywhere and just mention something even lightly critical yeah. of Israel and just wait for them to come. Uh, so that's why you also need to remember that there's a lot of uh, a lot of artificial or yeah, astroturfed um uh, quote unquote uh, pro Israeli uh, sentiment because if you actually go and and take a look into it the vast majority is very heavily pro Palestinian yeah. that's what's organic <laughs> yeah. yeah so um, yeah. yeah speaking of massive death uh, a story <laughs> this that, is a heavy uh, episode <laughs> Jesus Christ a story yeah, that we cannot uh, do without unfortunately uh, from a similar part of the world kind of right at the border between Hakim's world and my world uh, the death toll from the devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria mm. has now surpassed 46,000 wow. uh, and thousands of people are still missing uh, social media feeds are awash with examples of newly built residential complexes that have collapsed like sand castles burying occupants under the rubble many of mm. these buildings were sold as luxury housing compliant with the latest earthquake safety standards some of the contractors mm. responsible have tried to flee turkey over 130 people have been arrested over alleged breaches of safety codes and several construction company owners have also been put behind bars turkey's justice minister bekir vowed that all those who are at fault will be held accountable how about you doing your fucking job and this not fucking happening but this kind of greed and blatant profiteering are not just solitary crimes these residential complexes could not have been built without state issued building permits and licenses without the approving signatures of nominally independent building inspectors and without the necessary report from laboratories doing quality control of construction materials turkey has a fucking earthquake tax where people uh, pay money so that they can sleep well uh, whenever the ground chooses to fucking shake all of a sudden without thinking that they're going to fall into the ground because all those tax dollars uh, that they've given were supposed to go into the fucking cement that needs to keep them alive. Uh, but continuing... Uh, most people could not have gone ahead without uh, the government's many changes to construction and real estate uh, legislation in order to build the buildings that we've seen were collapsing like uh, a deck of cards, uh, like a, what is it, like a tower of cards, uh, yeah. all meant to facilitate the bloated growth of a destructive and insatiable construction sector the government has left its responsibility to ensure safe and regulated construction to the forces of the market building inspections have been privatized quite literally prioritizing profit over expertise contractors not given 
to pangs of conscience and the engineers willing to work for peanuts make inspections nothing more than a formality. This constant cutting of corners has led to an increase of illegally built and unsafe buildings. It's a deadly race to the bottom. Long-term unemployed engineers and architects have begun to hire out their university diplomas to the highest bidders, often subcontractors who want to cut through the red tape and cheaply finalize construction projects without the obstacle of an expert opinion. It would be a cliche for me to repeat something that we've said like a hundred times in this fucking episode, but the free market does not lead to better production. It does not lead, in this case, to better construction. It does not lead to a competition of, man, uh, obviously the construction company that builds nicer and flashier buildings is going to outdo the other one. But how do you think it can afford to build nicer and flashier buildings while outcompeting the price of the other one by fucking cutting corners. And imagine if like this, this is a country that, that like still has some relative legislature and you know, has inspectors and so on and so on. Imagine if the few like in a town of a million, you know, maybe you have like 50 inspectors that are chill, non-corrupt motherfuckers. Imagine what would have happened if you don't even have those 50. If you had like, you know, the libertarian dream of the free market, we wouldn't be able to build fucking mud huts. No, sorry, we would build like insanely tall, beautiful flashy golden mud huts that like the second mm. you sign the contract and move in you fall into your fucking neighbor's toilet because the fucking floor is made out of sticks it, it's, it's it's 46 lives lost because we thought it would make sense uh that the wealthy making themselves wealthier by building buildings in which they will never live made sense mm absolutely ridiculous it uh, basically just reinforces this nonsense that whenever the market comes into something it will try to find the possible cheapest possible way to do it, just like egopnik said what annoys me is that there's all this ideology in front of it that people have realized that everybody's internalized this as like oh but if you go private it will be better quality mm-hmm. and it'll be done more quickly etc etc et but how do you think that happens they that happens because they fucking cut corners very rarely, it happens because they have, you know, more funding and a lower pool of uh, quote-unquote customers that they have to, you know, uh, reach out to. But it's just, uh, this is just another symptom of a way bigger issue, which is the fact that, for example, there's not a nationalized construction ser- uh, sector. Uh, there is no but proper... But Hakim, then uh, building ugly... <laughs> <laughs> building no look oh, good. Building no look yeah, good. <laughs> Anybody, anybody who's, I wish the fucking, the worst form of destitution on anybody who ever says, oh, but building ugly, because fuck you. I, I, do you know what, I'll tell you, do you know what's uglier? Being fucking homeless, yep. all right? <laughs> Dumbass. These people, Yanni, I, I swear to God. By the way, again, again, these are the same people who live in the fucking copy-paste uh, mix suburbia, right? <laughs> Pretending that commie blocks, which, by the way, looking at them 35 years after they, uh, the, the, the the dissolution of the Soviet Union, where no maintenance has been done and paint has been peeling for fucking 25 years, and then you're like, oh, it's ugly. Yanni, Raba, well, I don't know what to tell you. These people are beyond fucking stupid. Look, I, uh, let's move on to a slightly more positive development, <laughs> uh, which I'm sure somebody's going to find a way to spin negatively. <laughs> but, I'm uh, Whatever. I'm rubbing my fucking palms. <laughs> All right. Basically, there have been rumblings, okay? Um, not in the Attack and Titan way, but uh, in a oh, more God. significant way. Oh, oh, I fucking cringe. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Ooh, my, my heart. Oh, Lord. Oh, I love you so much, bro. It's not a bad show. Uh, it's, 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 it's a, the, it's the, a fine the recent, show. Recent like, developments have been garbage, fine. but it's not a bad show. Come on. All weaves um, get salt mines. <laughs> enough, you know what? Uh, fair enough. Uh, fair enough. I, I think I can agree. With that, that somebody, somebody part. needs to make one of those, uh, one of those, uh, what do you call them, the diagrams of like uh, taste <laughs> between the three of us, because all three of mm-hmm. us have like some small stuff that like all of us are like obsessed with and really love, but then <laughs> yeah. have like stuff that with another guy you like, but with the third guy you you fucking hate, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that there is a. Um, tendency of discussion towards de-dollarization what that means in concrete terms is that since uh after world war ii basically there was a big 
meeting uh, that happened uh, in, I believe, 1944, um, uh, which happened in New Hampshire, in which over 40, con- uh, 40 countries got together to basically say, how are we going to plan the world economy uh, after the war? And they decided that since the United States is the largest economy on Earth, uh, and of course, the United States didn't, <laughs> of course, use their uh, <laughs> connections. Um, have you seen that Soviet post? There's a very good Soviet propaganda poster in which it basically shows the UN voting, uh, and it's the United States pressing a button. Uh, that says like yes to vote for something or no to vote for something else uh and when they press the button all like the western europe and their allies around the world, all them also vote yes like their arms go yeah. up automatically like uh, a marionette that's basically what happened uh, <laughs> and uh, they decided that oh we just it just so happened to decide that the united states and the dollar will get to basically um determine uh world trade through pegging basically all trade to the dollar uh, and this had been the kind of the case until the 90s. And then the first people to start discussing possibly breaking away from this was uh, Iraq and Libya, uh, who discussed taking petrol away from the dollar mm. and making a new currency specifically for dealing in petrol. Uh, and uh, that got uh, Iraq invaded and uh, <laughs> Libya destroyed, <laughs> unsurprisingly. Um, but thankfully, the, the uh, American empire has been kneecapped since. Uh, and as a result, they can't basically... Uh, fight against as much as they used to this new um wave that began mostly in latin america very interestingly but also now also uh, in the gulf uh, of uh, west asia with the united arab emirates and saudi arabia and whatnot in dealing petrol in the yuan uh, and the chinese currency uh, there's been a discussion between brazil and argentina of uh basically uh, completely moving away from the dollar uh, when it comes to trade w- between uh, latin american countries uh, and this is basically in the grand scheme of things, isn't going to be some change we're going to see tomorrow or in the next couple of years, but there is a huge shift towards this, which is very interesting. Mm. Uh, and the biggest uh, development of this is, of course, many countries are starting to reserve curr- uh, reserve, have reserves in other currencies aside from the dollar. Um, and of course, everybody has recently mentioned the or noticed the fluctuations in the value of the dollar. So there, we're in for some interesting developments mm. uh, there's a very decent article actually on this uh if you're interested it's on al jazeera <laughs> of all places <laughs> entitled will russia sanction will russian sanctions dethrone king dollar uh which discusses all this in fairly decent detail um of course read with a critical eye but it is it is a decent mm. um read up i i couldn't i couldn't think of a way to negatively twist uh the downfall of the dollar, except uh, yeah, except polarity will be imperialist. Oh, oh my god, you guys are just fucking let us have fun. Let us enjoy dick. the United uh, States stumbling a little bit. We we will yeah. uh, no, we'll no, no, to, okay. we, but we will fall together with the United States because our Patreon uh, donations are in dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, I wish Habibi, this is I I would like nothing more than this. Please, someone, <laughs> please someone bring will down the empire. Write I don't care. Like a three-page yeah. article, some Trotskyist or something about how deeply the D program's interests are embedded with uh, the American imperialist oh, American state imperial because interests. because we get paid in dollars. Think well, about no. it. Uh, I couldn't give a shit less. Someone honestly. in China, reach care. out, make a um, yeah. make a yuan backed Patreon. I'm waiting for the G bucks personally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm waiting for the G bucks. You know, I've I've gotten some stuff in the mail, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, the the, the usual memes is uh, somebody who's so uh, anti capitalist that somehow it comes around back to being uh, pro American empire because everybody else is going to be imperialist too. I guess <laughs> yeah. I know some. I know I, I know I'm taking some people out of context in this case, but it is a bit of a meme. And just to bring back everybody, bring down everybody's mood again. Uh, there's also a, a another decent article uh, that I recommend you read. Um, it's called "You Work Like a Dog, But Each Month by the Tenth, Your Pay Is Gone," uh, and it's a very long interview with a couple in Buenos Aires, um, in in Argentina, uh, a woman who's a manicurist and a man who I don't remember what he does exactly. Uh, but it's just a small uh, family, and they're talking about all their expenses, and there's some graphs and whatnot. And basically, it's the usual thing that you can imagine. Um, groceries have been inflated in price by 98%. Um, rent has gone up 80%. General work supplies, for example, for the woman, has gone up 100%. Some other stuff has gone up even more. Uh, and my favorite part about this is they have at the very bottom um, a series on inflation. And it's basically people in Ukraine, in, in Yemen, in Ethiopia, uh, in the UK, in Sri Lanka, in uh, many other countries, in India. And it's all the same thing. Mm. It's like uh, the, the title is, like, if I rest, how will I earn? Uh, we'll be left without a home, uh. struggling, broke all the time, pain at the pump by the skin of our teeth. Jesus. I can't afford my medicine. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I'm just and this is this is the market ladies and gentlemen this is this is capitalism this is the mythology that you've been fed since you were born that uh inflation completely decimating entire nations <laughs> across the earth for the profits of a tiny slither of people at the very top uh this is apparently rational not only is it rational but this is just how things are meant to be yeah. and this is how things will go on for eternity and let me just remind you at one point people believed in the divine right of feudal kings <laughs> so this is not a, 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 a um this too shall state pass. Of affairs that will last. Absolutely. Exactly. Let's drink to a time when we'll look like feudal lords to the future children <laughs> looked to us. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. Inshallah. And most importantly is we're not liberals. We advocate for actual material change through organizing, through political activity, number one. And number two, unlike liberals as well, we advocate for you reading, educating yourself, do the theory, do the work. Yes, Marxism means you're going to have to do some fucking math. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this is just how it is, okay? Anything worth doing uh, requires its price, either in time, in health, in effort, uh, in money, uh, or in, in blood, uh, amongst other things. Mm. With all that said, uh, again, uh, we're sorry for the many bummers <laughs> of this episode, <laughs> but this is just the state of the world. Uh, as Gramsci said, something, something, pessimism of the mind, something, something, optimism of the soul. Uh, love that quote. <laughs> we'd like, exactly right. Love something, something. We'd, yeah. we'd love to thank our, our patrons who we couldn't do this without, absolutely. Thank you for helping uh, us inflate to the US dollar. <laughs> Serve exactly, the empire, yes, won exactly the nation right. at the Praxis. time. Praxis. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> um, uh, we have some very exciting uh, news eventually coming. Ooh. You guys will, will see in a little bit. Ooh, yeah. Uh -huh. With all that being said. <laughs> with all that being said, though, this has been the Deep Program. I'm Hakim. I'm JT. And I'm Ugopnik. Don't shit yourself when you get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs>